welcome to Stenning, which is a little village on the south coast of England. I'm about to run a trail marathon. And while I run this, I'm gonna give you some of my own sage advice about how to run a trail marathon. So here goes. So you're going to get advice yeah. about running a trail marathon yeah. from somebody who's never run yeah. a trail marathon. Don't fall over. Okay, let's start at the beginning. You're training for your first trail marathon. If you've not run before, if you're just starting out. When you're training, run for five minutes, walk for five minutes, or run for a minute and walk for five minutes. Run for two minutes and then walk for five minutes. Build yourself up slowly. Don't start thinking, I'm gonna run five miles in one go. A, you'll get injured. B, you'll lose motivation pretty quickly. How many marathons have you run? This is number 10. Number 10. What's your advice for somebody starting out or going to run their first trail marathon? Don't drink the night before. Don't drink the night before. <laughs> Start by going out once or twice a week. Slowly build up your stamina and your ability to run without stopping. You will retain your motivation. You're less likely to get injured. If you do feel a niggle, rest. Don't try and run through it. It's the worst thing you can do. It'll just get worse. Training plans are really good to follow. There's plenty on the internet. Just search for marathon training plans and they will build up your stamina, your routine, get you into running regularly, hills, intervals, things we'll talk about in a minute. So once you start getting into your training, you're going to start doing something called long slow runs, LSRs. Initially, your long slow run might be around five miles, but generally, you're going to start to build the miles up. Week by week, add a mile, add two miles. In the six weeks before your main trail marathon, your A race, you want to be doing at least one or two 20 mile runs. Slow runs. They don't have to be at the pace you intend to go for your marathon. Although if you're doing a trail marathon, pace isn't really an issue. It's getting around the course and getting up those hills and getting through the mud. Okay, hills. You're gonna encounter hills. So the sooner you start to get used to them, the better. If you're following a training plan, it's gonna have hill reps in it. If you're not following a plan, do hill reps. Maybe choose a street with a hill or a trail with a hill. Run up it eight times and do that once a week. That'll build your stamina, get you used to hills. In some trail marathons, you're gonna walk up the hills anyway. Interval training. If you're interested in boosting your speed, there's nothing better than intervals. So these are runs where you do short bursts of speed followed by period of rest. So you could run very fast for a minute and then walk for a minute or just rest for a minute. You could run between lampposts, say, or trees, often called fartlek. Funny name, but it's Swedish for speed play. Try and do one of those sessions a week. Just got hit by a tree. <laughs> Well, this is extreme conditions for you people watching this documentary. It's very rarely like this. It is quite muddy, isn't it, today? Yeah. What would be your sage advice to somebody starting out doing a trail marathon for the first time? Don't do this one. Don't do, <laughs> don't do Stenning Stinger. <laughs> don't do Stenning Stinger when it's steady. No, no, no heroics. Yeah. yeah. Walk up the hills if you have to. Yeah.
cross training. Running is all well and good, but you want to build up your core strength as well. So your abdomen, your glutes, all the muscles that keep your form good when you run. So it's a good idea to do other training as well. Do another sport, go swimming, cycling, crossfit is another one people like to do. Circuit training, so planking, sit-ups, those kind of exercises. So don't just stick to running, do other things as well. Park run is a 5k timed event. It's free, it happens every Saturday morning at nine o'clock and there are different park runs at different parks around the country. I urge you to go and do it as part of your training routine. If you run park run once a week, what you find is it adds a racing element and a competitive element to your weekly training. It's kind of like a speed session as well, so it will improve your fitness and your speed. And it's great fun. Go to parkrun.org.uk. You can register there, print off your barcode, take it with you. There is nothing that will do your fitness, motivation as good as joining a running club. A running club isn't elitist. You will find slow runners, fast runners, old people, young people, people running to lose weight, people running to improve their marathon times, people running just for general fitness, and people running just for the crack, just for the social aspect. So join a running club, it's one of the best things you'll do races. When you're training for a trail marathon, any marathon really, it's probably a good idea to actually do some competitive races before your A race. Start with park run, then maybe a few months before your A race do a 10k. Thank you Mark, you carry on. That was Mark, 106 marathons down and still going. Yeah, a few weeks before your A race do a 10k race and then maybe two, three, four weeks before your A race try and do a 20 miler. somebody who's done close to 600 marathons. See, this is the other thing that's different about trail marathons to road marathons is you have time to chat to people, you meet people, you enjoy yourself. Road marathons are all about running fast and trying to beat your PB, whereas nobody cares on a trail marathon, just enjoy yourself. Okay, let's talk about nutrition. Your body needs fuel, and it gets fuel two ways. It can either turn carbohydrates into glycogen, or it can oxidize fat. Traditionally, runners do the carbohydrate thing. So we eat pasta, and rice, and porridge, and bread, potatoes, lots of starchy things that contain lots of carbohydrates, and traditionally, Marathon runners have done something called carb loading, increasing the amount of carbohydrate that you take in in the week before you do a marathon. So you can do that if you want. However, there is another way, and it's the way that I tend to run these days, which is actually carbohydrate depletion. What this does is it teaches the body 
to use fat as its main source of energy. Your body stores about an hour and a half to two hours worth of carbohydrates. So when you get to 20 miles or so on your mouth, and that's why you hit the wall. So when you do hit the wall, your body turns to fat for its energy source. But the problem is fat is turned into energy a lot slower than carbohydrate. And so that's why you, you slow down a lot. So what you need to do is teach your body to burn fat faster as its main source of energy. And you do that by not eating so many carbs and by running on empty in some training runs. Not all training runs, but some. I like to steer clear of sweets and sports drinks and gels. And I try and go for real food. My uh, food of choice is actually baby food. Ella's Kitchen baby food. It's real food. It does contain a good chunk of carbohydrates. It's easy to digest. It's not as sugary. It doesn't give you that sugar spike like a gel or a sports drink would. runners take pieces of pizza with them or, or little white white bread sandwiches white bread absorbs in the stomach easier than brown during a long run and it's less likely to give you gastric issues so peanut butter sandwiches are good Nutella sandwiches are good dates my advice to you is try some real food rather than gels and sports drinks and jelly bread. Hydration. When you run a trail marathon, you are going to sweat. You're going to lose water and sodium and potassium through your skin. Drink water. Drink occasionally one gulp every 10 minutes or one gulp every three miles or something like that. Don't over drink because you'll get gastric issues. And also if you really over drink, it's very dangerous. The other thing you need to do, as well as replacing the water, is replace the salts and the potassium, the electrolytes that you lose in your sweat. Now, depending on what you're eating, that might replace some of the salt, it might replace some of the potassium that you lose. I take something called S caps, a lot of ultra runners use S caps. Okay, let's get on to equipment. Trail shoes. If you're going to run the trail marathon, you're probably going to need trail shoes. Especially if you're running the Stenning Stinger, because this has been one of the muddiest marathons I've ever done. If it's dry, and you've got a fairly even surface to run on, you can get away with running a trail marathon in road shoes. But then, what's the point of running a trail marathon if it's flat? and not muddy. Hey, there are lots of different kinds of trail shoes. Some people like a lot of cushioning and they'll wear something like hockers. There are some people who like to feel the ground beneath their feet. They're your barefoot runners. And then there's most of us in between. I wear something called Salomon Speed Cross 3. Very well known, well liked shoe. Here it is. See the um, lugs underneath? Quite thick lugs grip in the mud. Um, they've also got these things that you just pull, you don't tie laces, you just pull that and it pulls them tight and you tuck them underneath this lip here. I occasionally clean my trail shoes. Next piece of equipment you might need is a race vest. A race vest is not what you're thinking. It's not a vest. It's this thing here. It's not vital. It depends what regime you're going to go for when you run your trail marathon. Are you going to stop at all the aid stations and drink the water there and the, whatever sports drink they might have and the food that they have there? Or are you going to carry your own? Are you worried about the weather? Do you need to take extra clothing, a foil blanket, a compass? There are lots of things you might need that you might want to carry, your mobile phone for example. So a lot of people choose to wear a race vest. I've got a Solomon 
Solomon S lab, S5 lab. It holds water in the back in a bladder and it comes through a tube here. So if I want water, I just do that. A running watch. Again, not an essential piece of kit. Your purest trail runner and ultra runner would say run through feel. You don't need a, a watch. Run for the joy of it. Run for the scenery. Run for the fresh air. Yeah, fair enough. Absolutely. Do that. But if you're interested in times, if you're interested in pacing, if you're at all interested in looking at a map of where you've been after you've run um, and, and how high you climbed, what elevation you reached, then a running watch is pretty much the only way you'll get all that data. I use a Garmin 920 XT. It's also uh, used for triathlon, so you can go swimming with it, you can cycle with it. And I wear a heart rate monitor next to my skin, so that transmits heart rate data to my watch. So this is my watch. Three hours, 26 minutes, 43. Steve's on his uh, 43rd marathon. In your 43 marathons of experience, any advice for the first timer or for anyone? I'd say quality training, don't run too much. Socks. You know, not all socks are made equal, and running socks are different to your average sock. They're made with material which helps the sweat and the water dry off quickly. They've got seams that don't rub, you might spend £15, but if that prevents blisters, it's worth doing. I wear something called Injinjis. Injinjis have little toe pockets as well, so like gloves for your toes. A lot of people wear something called seal skins. They're supposed to be waterproof, but once your feet get wet, then they're wet and they stay wet. Shorts and underwear. Again, chafing issues. It's worth getting decent underwear, decent shorts that have good seams so you're less likely to chafe and you're going to feel more comfortable. I like to wear light frill which is tight to my skin. Other people like to be freer. Tops, same thing. Wicking material, stuff that takes the sweat away from your skin, keeps your skin as dry as possible. A lot of people like Xbionic tops, skins. You need to decide whether it's going to be warm or cold, whether you're going to wear a base layer, or you're going to wear a cap. I have to turn my cap around now, it's not windy. Skull caps, or cap like this to keep the sun off. Keeps your head warm as well. I also now, these days, wear a buff. Keeps your neck warm in the cold weather. Other clothing you might want to consider on a trail marathon. Remember, you're going to be out there for four hours, five, six hours, longer if it's an ultra, along boggy, wet, cold terrain. So, do you want to keep a fleece in your backpack? I've got a waterproof on here, a montane waterproof. You can get waterproof trousers that you can keep in your backpack as well. Compression socks, compression sleeves. Some people say this helps blood flow back and forth from the muscles in your legs and your arms as well. A gilet, a body warmer. race day. You've done your hills, you've done your intervals, all your training sessions, you've been to park run, you've done a 10k race, a half marathon, you've done a 20 mile race, you've got your kit sorted, you know what you're wearing on your feet, on your top, you've got your equipment sorted, you're wearing a watch or a vest, you've got new nutrition sorted, whether you're carrying water with you, taking it from the aid stations, what are you eating? Are you eating gels? Are you eating real food? 
Hello, straight over. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're about 25 and a half miles, so nearly there now. Still really muddy. Whether you follow the training plan or not, you should be ready. If you're bothered about your time, you know, have a strategy. What time do you want to do it in? Do you want to do it in four and a half hours? So plan how fast you need to run approximately per mile or per kilometer. Bearing in mind, of course, that if you're going to have hills, you're probably going to walk up the hills. Look, 800 meters to the finish. So have a plan on race day and try to stick to it. Try to stick to what food you're going to eat and when, what tablets you're going to take and when. You might want to take some tablets to ease your stomach. You might want to take S caps or something like that for hydration. You might want to take painkillers. So work out when you want to take those and take them when you're supposed to. Drink water as planned when you're supposed to and run at an even, as even a pace as you can. Don't change anything on race day. Don't wear anything different to what you've been training in. Don't eat anything different. Don't go off too fast. That's the main thing. Don't go off too fast. How many marathons have you done? Fifty second marathon. So listen, what's your sage bit of advice? There's always next time. Don't put pressure on yourself. Just enjoy it. And we've got about 400 meters to go. We're going to finish in about four hours 45. Just coming up to the finish now. Another bit of advice about trail running. Listen to the race director, because there's usually a race director's briefing at the beginning of the race. Listen to that. Adhere to the rules of the countryside, you know. Close gates behind you. Don't drop litter. Thank the marshals as you go by, because, you know, these marshals are volunteers. They give up their Sunday to stand there in the freezing cold, cheering you on and giving you water and chocolate and whatever else. So be grateful. Where I am, I think I'm about 20 miles. Final aid station on the way home. I think we've given up on race.